Hey everybody, Mazzy616 here with another video for you. Today we are going to go over the first couple of rounds in Magic and show you kind of how the turns progress. It is going to be just me, unfortunately. Uh, I couldn't get it together, but it shouldn't be too bad. So we're just going to shuffle our deck up. We've already kind of pre-shuffled it a bit to get this video going on a little faster. If you guys want good ways to shuffle your Magic deck, please let me know down in the comments below. And I'll go over what they usually use. All right, I'm going to cut that because you can tell what that is. All right, so we have our deck shuffled. You'll offer it to your opponent. They'll take it. They'll cut it. And they'll send it back to you. So now that you got it back, you draw your seven cards. One, two, three... Four, five, six, and seven. And then your first turn, if it if you go first, you do not draw a card. So let's see what we got here. We have a really shaky camera. I apologize for that. We've got two mountains. We've got a creature that costs uh, four. If we'll focus. We have a creature that costs three. Another mountain. We have a, cre a uh, sorcery that costs four three with reach and then of course we've got our big boy so for our first turn we'll go ahead and lay down a mountain we'll pass turn generally whenever you pass turn on the first turn all they usually lay down is a land so you go ahead and draw for your next turn all right and we got an engulfing eruption so we will go ahead and play our second mountain unfortunately we don't have much going on so now we pass turn to our opponent they go through they lay down their second land lucky for us they don't have any creatures we're doing kind of an idealistic first couple of turns all right so we draw again and we are what is called landlocked so we don't have enough land to do anything we're at seven cards at eight you have to start discarding we'll pass they don't have anything either lucky us they play a couple of sorceries to maybe do damage to us so we'll take our life meter down from 20 we'll say they burned us for three just so there's some action all right our next turn we have an infuriate still not working much so we wait uh now that we have this many cards in our hand we gotta uh discard one so we'll discard engulfing eruption and that's what's called your graveyard that's where cards go after you use them their turn our turn we draw finally we get another mountain and now we can play our first creature so our first creature is going to be a goblin smuggler if you look at him he costs three total mana if it'll focus, focus, there we go. Costs three total mana. He's got haste. So as soon as he hits the ground, he can go. And then he's got a tap ability, that little, that sign right there. That little U-turn sign means tap. So another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. So we're not going to tap him for his effect, but we are going to summon him. So you tap your three land and you summon your goblin smuggler. And then to declare an attack, you'll tap him and say, I'm attacking you with Goblin Smuggler. They will decide whether or not to defend. In this case, they don't defend, so we'll have their life over here. So it's down to 18. All right, it's their turn. They do what they need to do. Uh, we're going to be lucky. They didn't get anything. It's our turn. So whenever you begin your turn and you've actually done something in the previous turn, the very oops, sorry, the very first thing you do is you untap everything you have that can be untapped. So you go back to having your three mountains available, your creatures available, and then you draw. If you draw before you do that, you can no longer uh, untap it once you've started your turn. So we're going to look through here and see if we have anything good that we can use. We have a nimble bird sticker, so we're going to say that we're playing against a white deck with angels or another dragon deck with flyers. So what we're going to do here is he's only three mana to cast, as you can tell from here. Two and a mountain. He's a two, three with reach, which means he can block flying creatures. A lot of angels can block. So we tap our three land. We play our nimble bird sticker, and then we'll go ahead and enter our battle phase. And we will attack with goblin smuggler. They don't do anything. They take another two damage. Boop, boop, they're down to 16. I'm going to move that so you can see. All right, from there, we end our turn. It goes to your opponent. Your opponent casts a sorcery like lightning shock or something like that, and they take out our one with reach. So he goes to the graveyard. They attack us because we have no defenders with a 2-2, two, two, so we'll go down to 15. 
All right, we will end, they will end their turn. They'll pass it to us. Upkeep. Then you draw. Whenever you draw, you get a mountain. So main phase one, I will lay down a mountain. This is where we're going to change things up a bit. Say they have a creature out that's 3-3. Three, three. It's bigger than us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with my Goblin Smuggler because I think he's not. I think he'd rather block later. They're going to go ahead and declare the block from their creature. Lucky for us, we have this nifty little instant that says Infuriate. So as you can see right here, oops, too far, right there, it's one mana to cast. So you cast your one mana. You play Infuriate because it's an instant. It can be played at any time other than the main phase one and two. So we have our instant. We bump our creature up to a 5-4 due to its effect. So we're going to go ahead and look at this effect real quick. One glorious artwork isn't that pretty all right as you can see it says target creature gets plus three plus two until end of turn so what you're going to compare that to on here so that we kind of have an idea of how to compare the cards you add it exactly how it looks so the plus three goes to power and the plus two goes to toughness so he went from a two two to a five four so he's attacking he easily gets over the opponent their card is destroyed. Now we go into what's called main phase two. Because I have this creature here that only costs two mana to summon. It's a goblin assailant. It's an easy 2-2 two -two to get out for only two mana. And he's a goblin warrior. And honestly, some of the goblin artwork looks really good. Now, we can look through and really have some fun, but we don't. We could have saved that instant for next turn if we needed to. We're going to go ahead and tap our two mana, leaving one open. And we are going to play our Goblin Assailant. If nothing else, he can be a meat shield for whenever they attack. So we go to our opponent's turn. And they have enough mana now to summon the big dog. So they're going to summon Sephira Sky's Blade. So this creature is incredible. I know we're not going to summon that one. We need one without flying so I can show you block. Give me just a second. Give, give me a second. Give me a second. Just one second. All right. There we go. They summon Inspiring Unicorn. So they've got an Inspiring Unicorn out on the field. Let's take a look at this card. One look at that. Oh, isn't that artwork nice? You've got the nice muted colors. We can get some light on it by dropping it down a little bit. So as you can see here, it's a creature unicorn. Whenever it attacks, creatures you control get plus one, plus one till end of turn. This will be very important from the fact that this is a 2-2. Two, two. Now, notice Inspiring Unicorn is a creature. So every single time this card attacks, it gets plus one, plus one. So Inspiring Unicorn declares the attack. It's a 3-3 three, three now. I'm going to block with my Goblin Assailant. And this is how everything's going to match up if I can get these two off the mat. Give me a second. Oop, reaching far. All right, so as they clash, we're going to go ahead and kind of stack them. So normally, your two power would go to their two toughness. Their two power would go to your two toughness. And since the toughness would equal zero on both cards, they'd be destroyed. However, Inspiring Unicorn gets a bump, plus one, plus one, to end a turn. So not only is its attack higher, which is now more than enough to take care of our card, its defense is higher, which means our two only does two damage to it's now three due to its own effect so our goblin assailant goes bye-bye i'm fighting with infuriate not with my goblin uh ch -ch -ch. yeah not with my goblin smuggler so we're going to change that oh go ahead let me know down in the comments below how i missed that one up all right and then inspiring unicorn survives and goblin assailant gets sent to the graveyard but thankfully it didn't have trample, so we don't lose any life. So now our opponent ends their turn. What's the first thing we do? We untap. So we've got everything all nice and untapped now. We go ahead and draw a card, and it is shock. Now, Inspiring Unicorn has a very weird effect because it says plus one plus one until end of turn. So it's already the end of their turn. So Inspiring Unicorn is now back to a 2-2. Two, two. And we have this lovely card here called Shock. It is one mana to cast. It's an instant, and it deals two damage to any target. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that Unicorn. So we're going to tap. We're going to Shock. They have no response, so Inspiring Unicorn goes bye-bye. All right, we have three mana left, and nothing that we can really do with it. So we go ahead and swing for two. 
that drops them down, boom, boom, to 14, and they end their turn. They can't do anything, so we go ahead and draw. We get another mountain, and with five mountains, we can bring out pretty much just about anything. So since they don't have anything, we're going to go ahead and summon Hostile Minotaur. Hostile Minotaur, so as you can see, it's got haste. So we're going to go ahead and summon it, and then it's going to automatically attack for 3, 5, and that's kind of how you play the game. If you noticed, I forgot to untap my goblin, so I can't attack with them. And that's how the general turns work. Like I said, at a later date, if we can hit 25 subscribers, I'll go ahead and get my wife to sit down and play a game of Magic with me. She enjoys it. She's fairly new to the game, so you guys can see kind of a more step-by-step -step basis on how these turns go. And that's essentially how you play. So, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. If there's anything you guys need, just let me know. Throw it down in the comments below. They're really good for YouTube algorithm, and they'll get my content out to more people. I keep hitting this camera. I'm getting a new camera mount to where it's not as complicated. Right now, I've got one that kind of shares it with the light source. But anyways, thank you guys so much again. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.